Nope. <sighs> so very good morning boys and girls and welcome back to another video. Welcome to a very windy early August morning. Now I'm kind of wrapped up as if it's late August right now. I'm sort of regretting life choices. It's currently half past four in the morning. And I get the feeling this one's probably going to suck just a little bit. Now I'll come up to Flambrae. We're going to shoot some long exposure sunrise stuff. Hopefully. And I'm meeting up with David Flower who is currently sat in the car next to me. Sulking like a teenager because he's had to get up early, bless him. Let's get stuck in and see what the day brings. All right, so we've moved from the car park and we've moved down the cliff just a little ways. There is a little bit of shelter from the wind here, but as you can see behind me, there is some proper chop and proper turbulence and some proper waves going on in the bay down there. And, well, what little beach remains is either going to be swamped by sea right now or it is not somewhere you're really going to want to be. So I'm kind of wondering if... This little lookout perch here, shooting down towards the sea stack down there, is maybe the place to be right now. Hopefully the weather may die down a little bit. We'll see what happens, but I think for now, for safety and for pure, there's only one photograph right now anyway, I think camping out here on this ledge, seeing what happens with the waves in the sea stack is where it's at for me. If I got every word perfectly weighted So for this first photograph, I really have just decided to concentrate on the sea stack and the turbulence in the waves behind it. You're getting these really big waves that are crashing against the cliff face and smashing around the sea stack. And it just looks awesome. There is so much power and turbulence in these waves right now. So I've put the remote shutter on and we've turned all the sort of two second timers off. I'm just going to time it by hand as a wave sausage around so we're at iso 200 f 3.5 and that's giving us around a half second worth of exposure so we're still able to somewhat freeze the turbulence and the motion in the water but it's also giving it half of that long exposure look so you can still see where some of the trails of water are sloshing around so i'm going to stand here now and i'm going to watch this as the waves are flying about and hopefully time it as a really big one smashes against the cliff there's one. That looks quite nice. Oh, this is a bigger one. This is a bigger one. This is a bigger one. Is it going to be a bigger one? No, it kind of died out a little bit. I'm going to stand here now for a few minutes, just doing this over and over again. And let's see how it turns out. I'll throw the best one on the screen for you to see. All right, so I do hope that one turned out all right. I did end up taking that photograph several times so i do have a lot of options to choose from there so for this next one i've done something i really wouldn't normally do when it's like this and uh, if i move i put the tripod right up on its center column and i really just want to try and get a wider angle of this bay so if i turn around you can see there's the lighthouse up on the cliff tops down there and you can also see the sea stack still down there and at the 12 millimeter field of view on the lower i can get all of this in and well why not I've given up all hope of a sunrise this morning, but there are still different layers of clouds, so there's still some texture in the skies to work with there. Unfortunately, there's going to be no colour, there's going to be no light, so these are going to be dark and moody kind of images. But yeah, I'm hoping this one works out. Let's have a look and see what we can do. So composition-wise, this is what we've gone for. So we still have the bay in the photograph down in Ye corner, and we also have the lighthouse up in Ye other corner. And well, just a lot of grass and cliff in between. So let's grab the remote shutter if I can find it. So we're at ISO 200 still, F4.5. And what's that, a quarter of a second is that? Let's go, let's see if we can try and time it with the lighthouse as the light on. I keep missing it, it's really annoying. There we go. Come on round. There we go, light on. Not often you come across a seagull on the path. I think I'll just walk it up. 
I seemed to be asleep when I got here. Looks like a baby. Cute little thing. All right, so I've just spent a few minutes just taking a few photographs from this little viewpoint area. I managed to stand up on the fence and I was just shooting across the bay, just seeing as, wow, that was a big one. Just seeing as there was some drama going off. Hopefully trying to just get a little bit of a different take on the photograph I took as the sea stack earlier on. And then I went down as close to the beach as I could possibly dare get. There was a lot of death down there, a lot of instant death. So again, I didn't want to take the camera down there and film things just in case, but I'm kind of hoping I managed to get one rather nice photograph. I was handheld, I was shooting around F5, and it was giving me around the 30th of a second, but because of the force of the waves and everything, it was just giving a little bit of motion to all the waves. It looked really quite awesome, so I'm hoping there's a nice photograph from there as well. Now, the plan is to move off towards the drinking dinosaur, just to the other side of this bay, and just see what's around up there. Things may get a little bit difficult to record up there because of the wind. Obviously, when you come down onto the cliffs here, you're a little bit more sheltered. So hopefully when we get up the top, the wind may have died down a little bit and be able to pick up this video as soon as we get up the stairs. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines There's a wild David Flower and very very unfamiliar territory. So we've moved round the other side of Flamborough Cliffs now and I'm gonna be honest, the wind isn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. Now the rock formation there, just over my shoulder, is what's called the Drinking Dinosaur. Now the clip where I showed Dave was, that's usually where everybody stands, so I thought we'd come round here, try a slightly different angle. Now I'm wondering if the six millimeter lower is going to be the best option here, just to get it all in, get that big vista go 16 by 9 crop. We'll see, we'll see, as soon as I get the camera set up on the tripod, we're gonna know. But because of the wind, I think the camera and the tripod, they're gonna stay fairly low to the ground anyway, just to try and eliminate some of the wind. And that way I can also use myself as a bit of a windbreak, but I was expecting it to be a little bit worse than it is. So it's really quite a bit of a godsend right now. All right, so we've thrown the 12 to 40 on and the 12 to 40 is just doing enough. It's just getting what I want it to be without it being super ultra wide. I'm just setting a nice soft, tight, wide angle composition, if that makes any kind of sense. So let's go to the cliff edge, we'll take the photograph, and hopefully we'll get out of this rain. It's just starting to drizzle just a little bit, I think. It's, we're gonna make things a little bit, a little bit unfun very shortly. So I'm gonna stand as close as I dare to the cliff edge. Now you can't see this from where you are, but there's this little small outcropping of cliff that I'm going to use in the bottom right corner. Just sort of nicely tidies up that corner of the frame. There's also a little yellow flower there. I'm going to try and get that in if I dare. I might have to move back. There we go. So we've got some purple and yellow flowers in. We've got the cliff edge just coming in like I wanted it to. We've got the drinking dinosaur. We're going to hopefully get something of a handheld longish exposure here. So we're F9. It's giving me an eighth of a second and ISO 200. But with the force of the waves right now, that should hopefully give us just a little bit of movement so we're able to see the journey the water takes across this frame. So I've focused on the rocks right in the background. Here we go, let's wait for a wave to come across. There we go, an eighth of a second. Nicely done. And so there we are boys and girls, just a grey, miserable, windy, very unsummer like late summer's day at the coast. Um, I hope I managed to grab a couple of photographs that keep us today. It's just been one of them. Photography for me, it's all about light, and when there isn't light, you sometimes have to just work with what you've got. And that was kind of what we ended up getting thrown at us today. So I'm gonna love you and leave you. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up because it really does help the video and it brings new viewers to see my content. And if you liked it more than that, there is a subscribe button somewhere below me. You can always hit that and see more nonsense from me every single week. So until the next time, I'm going to love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye.